Okay, I have an epilepsy warning in this video because because of this video having been edited by a guy who I don't even think was qualified to wipe his own ass. As well as I have to say that, that the music in this video was created by the Nazis in an attempt to help the Croats exterminate the Jews. Or the Serbs. I, I, I don't know. I'm, I'm an idiot. I don't know anything about anything. Okay, this video is called World War One Soldier's Kit, but is only five minutes long. And unless the BBC sold their souls to Mickey Mouse and became a spider fag, it would be impossible to talk about every single nation's uniform, equipment, and weaponry during the First World War. To win a war, you need the right stuff. Clothes, food, and weapons. Those are the essentials. So how well equipped was the British soldier in 1914? British forces had lots of different uniforms and equipment, but the most iconic uniform of all was worn by the British infantryman on the trenches of the Western Front. Hey, SJW Snowflake, they wore a Union suit underneath that. Hey, I know I'm making the same joke twice, but I also do know that the BBC is supportive of retards not being called retards, but those were not worn by the British, period. I think they might have been worn by the Germans, but don't um, quote me on that. Okay, I know that helmets are make, are able to make people invincible as well as immune to all types of cancer, but guess what? The Brits introduced helmets halfway through the war, so um, yeah. Okay, if this is early war, you forgot the pattern 08 webbing set, and although Beelzebub's skin was worn by the British during the early war, it was for very, 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 very cold weather. Okay, so, um, this is supposed to be early war, but the leather jerkin wasn't invented towards, um, 1916. So, yeah. You goddamned idiot! The SPR goes, guess we are a gas mask bag goes first, then the PO8 webbing. And yes, I'm a very pricky asshole. So there it is, the British infantryman ready for action. But just how ready? The British infantryman went into World War I as the best prepared soldier on the planet. Let's take this, for example, the Lee Enfield rifle. Specifically, it's the number one Mark III, but that's too much knowledge about guns if, to give a single person, because if a single person would know that, they would immediately become a school shooter. How like I am a school shooter. The Brits were famously fast and accurate using this rifle. It could take 10 rounds in the magazine. The British built 4 million of these during the war. They were in service for years after. This was the best rifle on the Western Front. Oh my god, it's not like the Mauser Gravier 98 had a few advantages over the Leonfield No. 1 Mark III. But yeah, they couldn't be bothered to do in-depth research. And that includes any in-depth research. 
Now, instead of gaiters, the British had the ingenious idea of putties that they brought over from their experience in India. They'd wrap these right around the lower leg, and that would keep your legs dry and also provide a lot of support as well. One of the biggest challenges for any soldier in the past or the present is carrying the sheer amount of kit they need to keep themselves alive and take the fight to the enemy. Now, the British soldiers with the 1908 pattern webbing just slipped over the body like this, and it allowed them to carry much of what they needed into battle. A water bottle here, ammunition here and here, and my bayonet, 17 inches of sharpened steel, right here. Hidden around the back, the entrenching tool, or a spade to you and me, simply drop that in there. This allowed British soldiers to get themselves out of trouble if they're being shot at by immediately digging a mini hole in the ground and getting themselves out of harm's way. Now, the British kit was good. It wasn't perfect. Now, this is a cloth cap, it's a good bit of camouflage, but obviously it provided no protection against high-velocity shrapnel, and that's why about halfway through the war, steel helmets were issued to all the British troops. But, believe it or not, this was still a lot better than what the French and Germans had. The German pickle horn. It's made of leather, and it provided an obvious target for marksmen. And if Britain had the best prepared soldiers, no prizes for guessing who wasn't too far behind. But if the German kit wasn't as up-to-date as the British, they did have one major advantage. Okay, where's the Tornister backpack and the bread bag? But no, serious, they left my dad to get some cigarettes five years ago and they never come back. Ugh. There were over four million of them. At least German battle dress was fit for fighting in a 20th century war. In 1914, one army soldiers were colour coordinated more for the Parisian runways than the trenches. Okay, again, where's the backpack? And by the way, I'm sorry, I don't really know the technical term for the French backpack, the official name, because I um, don't care about them. I don't care about the French. Uh, I don't know what else to say. I was just kind of winging this and it fell flat on its face. Ooh la la! It's not that the French military hadn't heard of khaki, but lots of countries were unprepared in 1914 and couldn't produce tons of new kit overnight. Sometimes you've got to make do with what you've got. The British Army's bang up to date uniform and weaponry was down to its battle hardened experience, just as well, because they would need every advantage they could get. Okay, I'm gonna read the in-depth conclusion that concludes every single detail about what I thought about this video. And it is to a T, and there will be no, like, figurative language or common language. The video fucking sucks! Okay, that was a long break that I used purely to extend the runtime of this video. Um, anyway, uh, if you want to see the finished uh, product for the drawing that I was showing while I was talking, uh, I'll leave a link to a new Deviant Art I've account I've created so you can see the final product, as well as uh, please subscribe, or else I will bring Hitler back to life and have it. Reverse, so that Russia will be invading Germany now. Okay, bye. Hitler's hand. We are the British Army, and we're here to take your land. My good friend Bertie, he's in the UDR. Ooh,